Good morning, John. My big three takeaways from this interview is one that President Volodymyr Zelensky, having watched the debate, heard what former President Donald Trump said, is potentially ready to sit down with him. He said it'll be tragic for Ukraine if they don't know what comes if former President Trump was to win in November. We also sort about talked about the state of the war. He doesn't like the word stalemate or deadlock. He says the problem is Russia can track if they were to have a counterintensive because the weapons have been so delayed coming from the United States, even though he was re very grateful to the U.S. Congress for recently uh, signing off on the $60 billion. And then finally, John, one thing that I really took away from this conversation, if, if the war to end, I asked him about a third party mediator. Who can actually mediate the end of this war? You'd think it would be someone that has credibility in both Russia and Ukraine's eyes. He actually said it needs to be the United States and China. Let's take a listen to the state of the war at play right now from the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. We've had agreements about ceasefire between Ukraine and Russia, and Russia has been always breaking all the agreements and has been killing our people. So only if it's on some international uh, forum in the presence of the countries, leaders who are trusted, they might have different ideas, different views on the stages how this war will be over, but we all have to be on the same side. We have to trust each other. Trust is very important. The peace summit, by the way, has shown that we can follow this plan. Over 100 countries uh, were there, and today we're talking about the and nuclear uh, security and energy security, and there will be a clear plan. So the ceasefire also needs a clear plan. We must understand that Russia would not be using ceasefire to simply accumulate uh, equipment on the territory, our territory that they've occupied, because we will not be striking them. I mean, they can use that to create a, a strong fist here and then accuse us of breaking, of breaking the ceasefire and start another invasion. So it's really complicated for us. It, it would take a significant loss uh, for us if they invade again, as in the beginning of 2022, when they have almost reached the capital city. And they accumulated a lot of equipment on the territory of Belarus. And Belarus kept saying that, no, it's just the exercise. No occupation is um, in mind. It's just the training. It's just military games. It's very important. I really don't want to have this big trouble for my country, because we are at war already. Giving the advantage to Russia now, it's just impossible. We need to be smart, and it's important also who will be responsible for this, besides the Ukrainians who are paying with their lives. Which country uh, will be responsible. It's easy to just talk about ceasefire, but it's very difficult to enforce it, to keep it. It's very difficult to find those who will respond why the ceasefire But we're going to see broken. more calls for a ceasefire, especially as the world politically is moving to the right and potentially moving to the right in the United States. You have said this war is dependent on U.S. aid. I want to ask you, did you watch the presidential debate between Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. So, first and foremost, the ceasefire is an important element in any plan to finish the war. So, a ceasefire is not finishing the war. We've been there. It would be just a frozen conflict, and it would be frozen for the aggressor. It would be frozen on our territory, and our people would be under the occupation. This gives a clear advantage to one side. That's why it's easy to offer different proposals of ceasefires. But what's important? It's important to find answer what would come after. It's the matter of not just the victory. There are many people talking about ceasefire, and it's fine that people are, uh, are talking, but what would happen next? That is the question. For example, what's the next step? What's the third step? 
What would be the step when Putin breaks the ceasefire? After the ceasefire, a month after the ceasefire, will he pull out the troops out of Ukraine? Who guarantees that he will pull the troops out of the occupied territories? And there's silence. Nobody has answer. I'm not accusing. I just want to explain that we are at war and we understand this. So, the debates. Well, yes, I, I saw because the, the answer of yeah. how this might all unravel will depend on also who's at the table from the United States. Amongst other things, it might depend on who is the president of the U.S. Yes, that's a fact, because the U.S., the United States of America, today uh, are probably the powerful, the most powerful player. So the matter whether the United States would be the major international player, whether they want that or they want to focus more on their internal politics. I cannot say it doesn't depend on me. So did you watch the debate? Yes, I watched. I watched the debate. So, first and foremost, I want to say, I don't know, maybe it would be out of tune uh, to what we see in the US media, but I watched. And like we are not uh, electing the president of the U.S., so I didn't uh, look at the incumbent president and the former president. I looked at them in terms of Ukraine. President Trump said he'll end the war before he's elected. Yeah, yeah, I heard. What do you it. make of that? Let me be frank. For example. Well, the decision is on U.S. public. But let me just have some reasoning. Yes. So let us imagine that the winner might be, tr might be Trump in November. And he knows how to end the war. He has a plan. Me, as the president of a country at war, not a theoretical person, but a real-life person, I would like to be prepared. Uh, well, uh, we are 40 millions, we're a big country, and we really depend on the aid from the world, and we depend on the aid and the position and the stance of the U.S. So I would like to understand what would it mean to finish war fast. Uh, tomorrow, do we want the war to be over tomorrow? We didn't, the war didn't to start. It was Putin who started it. But I hope you agree that it would be fair if Trump knows how to end this war, he should tell us today, because if there are risks to Ukraine's independence, if there are risks that we will lose the statehood, we want to be prepared for this. We want to understand whether in November we will have the powerful support of the U.S. or we'll be all alone. Looks like President Zelensky is ready to sit down with former President Trump, given his comments, Jonathan and Lisa, at the debate. When it came to President Biden, he was very careful with his words about his deteriorating health. He didn't really want to weigh in. But I will tell you this. When I asked him, Zelensky, who's 46, if he would still do his job at 81, his face said it all. He gasped. He laughed. He said a lot of individual things matter about that. Who's on your team? What's your health? And, of course, he wanted to make sure it was, everyone was aware that Ukraine is also a country at war.